From Wisconsin Public Radio and PRI, Public Radio International, it's to the best of our knowledge. I'm Jim Fleming. First to Clay Shirky, author of Here Comes Everybody, The Power of Organizing Without Organizations. I think in the case of social media and the way it was used by insurgents in, in the Middle East and North Africa, there what it was used to do is to connect people. That is really its principal function. And it provided a way to connect people, which is something we have an intrinsic bias for, that wasn't possible under the Mubarak regime, under the Ben Ali regime in Egypt and Tunisia, that wasn't possible in the traditional media environment. That people could connect to one another in groups and they could do a couple of different things. They could synchronize their opinion, right? If I hate life under Mubarak and you hate life under Mubarak, but I don't know that you think the same way I do, you and I can't actually synchronize our reactions. And in many cases, what autocratic regimes want to do is they want to keep their citizens from being synchronized. And then the other thing that social media provided a way for the insurgents to take advantage of is it made it easier to coordinate people, right? So the Egyptians were able to announce in advance, right, there's going to be a protest on Jan 25, right? We're going to hijack police day as a kind of ironic commentary on the police state. And they could get that message out without having to go through any state media. So it's a generational thing in a sense. Whatever you call yes. the social media, yes. there is a generation alive and active now that understands the connectivity of the internet. That's right. And, you know, and Tom Slee, I think, is, has, who, who writes a lot about this stuff, has, has written really, really well on this. There is another parallel here, and that's with rock and roll, which is it's not just that the, the insurgents have made imaginative use of tools that allow for synchronization and coordination. That they've clearly done. It's also that young people sense that there's something different in the culture that they have access to and their elders don't. And in the same way that rock and roll in the 60s carried some specific and overt political messages, but also carried a message that you, to the young people, your generation is special, you can do things your parents didn't do, that there was clearly some sense on the part of both the young people turning out and on the part of the elders watching them that this business of overthrowing Mubarak, which had been a dream for decades, was going to be accomplished by people who didn't know that they couldn't do it. <laughs> and that some of that sense of specialness came from participating in this cultural change, what Emily Nussbaum calls the greatest generation gap since rock and roll. And I think at least some of what we're seeing with the adoption of these tools is a sense that they either make us or tell us that this generation of young people is special.